Why is it that I feel when I'm in my later 30s or somewhere into my 40s, my metabolism has begun to decline? That's the answer I wanna give you here today. And there seems to be, again, very definitive proof as to why this happens. All right, everybody, we're diving into episode 2847 of the Cabral Concept. Excited to get into some brand new research, the latest research on why your metabolism is slowing down and actually what age this happens. It seems, based on really good data, that there are two pivotal declines over our lifetime. And that's not even saying if you get to your 90s, which we'll consider it the third, but given the fact that most humans in a Western-based civilization are living somewhere between the ages of 75 to 80 years old, we'll count that a little bit later. I'll still give you what that decline looks like, but let's actually check out two very important times during your life where your metabolism begins to drop. The very first one, is at 20 years old, somewhere around the end of the peak of puberty. So when they looked at metabolic rate, which I'll get to in just a moment, and they found around the age of 20, at, now again, that's just an average between uh, males and females, where maybe puberty for females might be a, a little bit earlier, and puberty for males is a little bit later. We do know that some people continue into puberty up to the age of like 25 or so, but for the most part, right around that average of 20. And there is a precipitous drop at 20 years old. That means the number of calories you are burning per day actually drops after puberty. And that's because the transformation that they talk about in Ayurvedic medicine, which is like that pitta base phase, begins to slow a little bit, but not, not a massive drop, but definitely drops and, and very clear on the map in terms of metabolic burn, the number of calories your body burns, both at rest and with activity I'm right around 20 years old. Now, the second drop is at 60 years old. So there's this gap in between of 40 years where there is no major fall off in metabolism. But then the question comes up, why is it that I feel when I'm in my later 30s or somewhere into my 40s, my metabolism has begun to decline. That's the answer I wanna give you here today. And there seems to be, again, very definitive proof as to why this happens. Okay, let's first cover resting metabolic rate and our daily burn per day. So this new study that I was looking at, and again, I'll publish that at stephencabral.com slash 2847 if you wanna read the study yourself. It was actually, it's a, it's a write-up on the study, very easy to read, um, two beautiful graphs that you can actually look at where you can see the fall off in metabolism as well. But let's get to that, and I wanna give a little bit different hypothesis as well, why some people begin to feel that between like, let's say 35 and 45 or 50 years old, not just at 60 years old. The first one is this, they're stating that rest of med rest metabolic rate. So think of that as this is your body burning calories at rest with no physical activity. It's about 60% of the calories per day. Now, when I see that number, it's I've seen it at different ranges. I really have. I've literally seen it between, let's say, 50 and 80%. But they're using 60%. They've got some good data. Let's go with that for the sake of the argument here today. So that means um, on a daily basis, 60%, so let's just say about, about two-thirds of the calories you're burning is just naturally from your body. And we'll get to what burns the most in just a moment. But then 40% or one third, again, however you want to look at it, is coming from your activity, or at least it should be. And that is one of the big conundrums that we'll talk about in just a moment. So here's what happens though. After around 35 to 45, both men and women experience a small decline in hormones, but it shouldn't be great. It's really not until we get to about 45, 50 years old. That's, that's the minimum age for men and women. So that's why when men and women are talking about testosterone replacement therapy, estrogen, like progesterone, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, I get it. I understand it. I'm not against it per se. However, it is a sign at that age that something deeper is going on in stress in the body. It could be a number of things. It could be 
um, psychological, emotional, no doubt about it. It could be gut based, uh, digestive based. It could be heavy metals. It could be viral based. It could be thyroid. It could be a lot of factors. But what happens is those sex hormones begin to suffer as the stress hormones increase. I don't know that it's the best idea to not fix the stress hormones or underlying root ish, root cause and instead just increase the sex hormones endogenously, meaning putting more hormone in your body. Will it transform your body? Will you add more muscle mass? Will you boost metabolism? The answer is yes, it will. Like I get it, it works. But do we wanna do that for the long run? Is that really what we want? I teach this very in depth inside of High Performance Health. You're obviously welcome to check that out at highperformancehealth.org, but we're not gonna have that conversation here today. We're just gonna go with the exact facts. So when you do, get this decline in sex hormones, which is DHEA, testosterone, your three forms of estrogen, as well as progesterone, and there are a few others, but those are the main ones, um, you're gonna feel a decline in metabolism as well. And yes, it will affect your thyroid to a degree and your th adrenals to a degree. Over time, you begin to become a little bit more worn down. But here is ultimately what they found is affected. It is the 40% of the activity. So as an example, if you're eating 2000 calories per day, well, 1200 of that is your natural metabolism that mainly goes back to what's called fat free mass. This study found that one of the largest indicators, if not the largest, was actually the amount of fat free mass you have on your metabolism. So what is fat free mass? It is essentially anything besides body fat. So it is lean body mass. That's always how we talked about it in the fitness and personal training and strength and conditioning space. All you would do is you would take your body fat, you would subtract your fat pounds, or, or you'd convert essentially your fat percentage into pounds. So you know, let's try to do easy math for me on the show. Let's say you weigh 150 pounds and let's say you have 30% body fat. So all we're going to do is multiply that 1.5 times 30, right? And again, I, I hate doing podcast math, so you could correct me if I'm wrong. That's okay. So you've got about 45 pounds of body fat. So if we subtract that from 150, well, you have 105 pounds now of fat-free mass. Now, is some of it bone? Yes. Is some of it organ? Yes. But like we're looking at anything that's fat-free. And the reason is, is that fat by itself, adipose tissue, is not very metabolic. It's not going to burn all that many calories. So here's the interesting thing. They found that even if you separated out men and women and you took gender out of the equation, what they found was that women and men who had the same amount of fat-free mass actually had a very similar metabolic rate, metabolism. I found that to be really impressive because for the most part, and I've actually seen this play out in practice a bit, testosterone plays a bit in it, but maybe those women also had not the same level of testosterone as men, but a little higher level of testosterone. So again, found this very, very interesting. So what I want to share with you is this. Fat-free mass is the dictator of a lot of what you get in that 60%, the resting metabolic rate. So let's just say on 2,000 calories a day, 1,200 comes from your fat-free mass. And I know this is over general, uh, generalized and simplified, but that's okay. Like that's what we need to look at for today's conversation. And I can link up the article if you want to get in a little bit more depth. But the second part is this. The 40%, so the 800 calories a day is predicated on activity level. And so they found, you know, why are Americans and why, why after this whole industrial revolution were people gaining a lot more weight? Yes, there was processed food. Yes, there was all of these things. Yes, there was more inflammatory toxins. No doubt about it. However, what they found, and they've still studied them to, to today, that indigenous hunter-gatherer tribes burned on average 500 to 1,000 calories per hour. I, I found that to be absolutely enormous in terms of calorie burning. That means they were literally fully active for that 500 calorie, let's say on average, let's say it's 500 because a thousand, I mean, they'd have to be sprinting and doing some serious work. And they'd also have to be, you know, have a good amount of body weight to burn that thousand calories per hour or be deconditioned. And I don't think hunter gatherers were really that deconditioned. So let's use 500. So let's say they worked for four hours per day. Okay. Four hours now 
times a burn of 500 calories, right? Puts you at what? 2000 calories a day. Okay. Well now if you're only eating 2000 calories a day and you add that 2000 for your burn, that is then, um, they offset each other. So you're at zero, but then you have a deficit of 1200 from your resting metabolic rate. So there's two scenarios. One, they can eat more, right? They can eat an extra 1200 calories per day because of their activity level and maintain that same weight or their metabolism will begin to slow or they'll lose weight. Like that, that's how this equation works. So they found though, then why aren't Americans able to eat the same amount of calories? And it really came back into Americans are not doing strength training to keep fat-free mass up because after the age of about 27, especially in women, you'll lose about five pounds of muscle per decade. That's significant. It's a kind of a slow burn from 30, right? You lose five pounds to 40. From 40 to 50, another five pounds. But then from 50 to 60, you know, it, it's another five, maybe even a little bit more pounds. And so now they've found, and this is very significant, after 60 years old, the metabolism has slowed and will slow by another 7% per decade. And by the time you reach your 90s, and hopefully you do, and you're in good health, Unfortunately, your daily expenditure will be down a full 20 to 25%. So whatever you ate from the time you were in your 50s, right before your 60s, let's say you ate 2,000 calories. Well, by the time you get to your later 80s, 90s, you can only eat 1,500 calories. And that's saying you might even have the same activity. So when you look at that, we have to eat less every year. One, because we lose muscle mass unless we're strength training two to three times a week, okay? Or two, we keep up with our activity. And that is why when I do my longevity-based research in cultures around the world, I see that they're just up and walking and moving. They are gardening for a few hours per day. They're walking throughout their little towns and villages. They are moving about, working, or they're just taking a walk after meals as well. All of these things not only can increase lifespan, the amount of time that we live, but will also improve health span. Hopefully today's show was helpful. It really does go into that. We don't always need to eat less. We don't. We don't always need to just drop our calories. What we actually need to do, in my opinion, is be more human, is to actually strength train a couple times a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday is a great schedule to be on if you can. But the other thing is this. It's just to be more active. And it doesn't mean going for marathon-based runs. It just means being more active, getting up more often, getting at least 10,000 steps per day. I have a lot of previous shows on that. I'm always happy to help. Please do feel free to leave a comment below as to what you think, if you've seen this play out in your own life, and also if you have any additional comments. So thanks so much. Take care, everybody. I'll be back with a brand new Cabral concept tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.